My name is Lois Ellen Frank, and I grew up in Manhasset, which is on the North Shore of Long Island in New York, with my dad's side of the family. I work as a chef, and I'm the owner of Red Mesa Cuisine in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Red Mesa Cuisine is a Native American catering company that specializes in indigenous cuisine with a modern twist. But I'm not only a chef. I kind of have lots of other secret skills, and that's part of the journey that uh, I've been on. I started out in restaurants as a chef in New York and on Long Island, but I was told as a woman that I would never be an executive chef because women had not crossed the culinary gender line. So what does that mean? That means that the profession of cooking is dominated by men, but that didn't stop me and it shouldn't stop any of you. So uh, I left the culinary industry and I got my undergraduate degree after high school in photography. And what came naturally to me was I worked in restaurants to support myself because I had chef and culinary training, but I was becoming a photographer. So I began to photograph food. So I'm still in the food industry, but now I'm changing it a little. And my Bachelor of Arts uh, is from Brooks Institute in Santa Barbara, California. And I did, in fact, uh, become a food photographer in Los Angeles. What I miscalculated was that this industry, the film industry at the time, was also dominated by men. So while I apprenticed for some of the best men in the industry, the best food photographers in Los Angeles, it was very hard to break out on my own. So how did I solve that problem? Well, I became a food photographer and now I use those skills all the time. I am photographing my own cookbook right now, which we're going to hand in in uh, early March of 2022 for a book that's going to come out in 2023. I have photographed over 20 books for other chefs, uh, but writing and researching and photographing, I now have this skill, even though I left the photography industry, you know, and the industry changed, right? Because of technology. So all of you probably have iPhones and Instagram and TikTok, and everybody thinks they're a photographer. So why would you pay someone else to do something that you think you could do? So the industry changed. There's still lots of photos uh, when you go into a restaurant, on a menu, on a menu board, on frozen food packaging. So there's still a lot of this going on. What has changed is that the competition has become fierce. So I put that in my cap of skills. And then I moved to Santa Fe, New Mexico, and I became a private chef. And I said, well, do I want to work in a restaurant? How do I see this going? So the evolution was that I formed a company and this company is a catering company called Red Mesa. I've actually formed an LLC in the state of New Mexico and started to do private events. And everybody kept pushing me to do a restaurant. But when you have a restaurant or, or what they would say, brick and mortar, Brick and mortar is different in that it's stationary. As a catering chef, I can go and cater all over. And I can do that not only here in Santa Fe, I could go to Albuquerque, I can go to some of the reservations, I can go to California, New York. So for me being mobile or being uh, able to not be tied to a brick and mortar establishment was a little bit better for me. I also work with the State Department and I've traveled all over the world doing and promoting Native American cuisine. I've been to Russia and I've been to Ukraine and I've been to the United Kingdom and I've been to Italy and I've been to Guam and I've been a guest chef doing catering all over. So for me, this was very exciting and worked very well into my career, but it didn't stop there because when I first started doing uh, research on Native American cuisine, I was told that with a BA in art, so a BA in photography, I didn't have any credentials to really understand what Native American cuisine was. So how do you get credentials? You go back to school. So I went back to school and I got my master's and my PhD. So I'm a doctor chef. And my PhD or my graduate work was done at the University of New Mexico. 
And it took me a little longer than I thought, but I became, after getting a PhD, an expert in my area of study. And from that research, I was able to research menus and construct menus based on my culinary experience, photograph those menus based on my photography experience, and execute those menus with an authoritative voice from my PhD. So now it's expanded. I work with doctors and nurse practitioners. I work with the New Mexico Department of Health. So I work with the state. I work with tribes. I do educational presentations for conferences, but I also get to cook. So I've kept my hands in the kitchen while expanding my knowledge and using that knowledge to be able, I teach on the college level. So I'm an adjunct professor at the university, um, actually uh, Institute of American Indian Arts here in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And I teach an indigenous food class. So all of what I've done and all that I continue to do gets woven, and it's sort of like a finely woven blanket into what I do, and it makes it very exciting for me. So when I'm in the kitchen, let's say I'm doing an event, uh, there's a lot that has to happen as you do the event. First, you have to construct a menu that your client has to approve. Once the menu is approved, then you have to figure out who your staff is, what your staff is, how much or how many staff you're going to be using for this particular event. Smaller events need less staff. Larger events need more staff. Uh, what is the kitchen like uh, in the location, because I'm a caterer, in the location that you're going to? Is there a kitchen? Do you have to bring burners or do you need your own? Do we have to rent a stove? Uh, how many people are we serving? All of these factors. And then we go in the kitchen and we start to prep. Prep begins anywhere from three to two days in advance of the event. Uh, all of the desserts and the baking usually happens early in the morning on the day of the event or the day before. Uh, so I usually still do all the baking, which is interesting because I didn't go into pastry, but I do all of the baking. And then I work with another Native American chef his name is Walter Whitewater, and he does a lot of the savory. And then on the night of the event, everything comes together. We heat stuff up and plate it and serve it to our guests. Uh, we usually do events anywhere from three to 12 courses. Sometimes some of the clients like to do small bites, and then that's a lot more work. So you have to remember that even though it's a small bite, it's the same amount of work if you were going to cook for, let's say, 10 people as if you were going to cook that same food for 20 or 30 people or 40 people. So you have to plan because there's a lot of prep involved in making things. And you don't want to make stuff too far in advance because then it's too early and you can't wait till the last minute because then it's very stressful uh, being a chef. So I spend a lot of time figuring out schedules and planning and sourcing and food pickup and then prep and then execution. But I enjoy the process. And I think a big part of doing what you love is that when you do what you love, it's almost as if it's magic. The universe comes together and it supports you and makes your job fun and easy. And then the time goes by really, really fast and people are contagious with the passion that you have. So I have a lot of passion and people sense that and they know that. And it makes the experience not only unique, one of a kind, but more enjoyable for my patrons. By the time you get to college, you're there's room for you to be different. I was always very different. And what does that mean? What does it mean being different? I wasn't mainstream. I was always on the periphery in high school. I didn't fit into the main cliques or the main groups. Uh, a really good example is I took public speaking. And I loved this class. Oh, it was such a great class. And I'm going to encourage all of you. You need to be able to speak. You need to be able to sell yourself. Whether, no matter what you do, you need to be able to communicate, whether it's within a, a, a job or a kitchen or your patrons. So take public speaking if you have that option or try and learn how to speak to the public because this is very important. And, you know, we had to bring in an item. 
And everybody brought in very docile items. And I lived in an area on Long Island where there was water. So there were a lot of surfers. So I brought in a surfboard. And that was way outside the box, right? Who brings this big thing in and talks about it? But it felt that, and I've always felt this way, and my food is very visual. And what I do is very tactile. And I think knowledge comes from experience. I think experiential knowledge is one of the best ways for you to learn, to touch, to smell. And the mistakes, you know, everyone's afraid of making mistakes. Mistakes are a good thing. Why? Because you learn from your mistakes. All of the mistakes that you make help you and perfect you on your journey of whatever it is you're going to do. So don't be afraid of mistakes. And I think I had a mom that was always really good because she told me, you could do whatever you want, aim and shoot for the stars, shoot high. And if you fall a little below where you shot for, it's still okay. So this is all a big part of what I went through in high school. What was I going to do? I graduated early, so I had enough credits to graduate in three years instead of four. And I wanted experiential knowledge. I wanted to go and be in a restaurant and and peel 3,000 shrimp in a day, which I did. I wanted to be able to assist and work long hours. And all of this is a part of what we're doing. So high school is a difficult time, but remember, it's the pathway to get you on your journey to where you want to go. And whether you go to a technical school or a vocational school or a four-year college, or you go on to get your master's or a PhD like I did, all of this is important. So do the best that you can in high school. And remember that when you go to your reunions in five years or 10 years or 20 years or 30 years, it doesn't matter because this is your journey.